of Massachusetts. Congressman, thanks for being with us this morning. You are a supporter of the Affordable Care Act. You've said it works and continues to work. I don't know if you could hear what Congressman Collins was saying right there, but what do you make at least of the general argument to get rid of Obamacare as soon as possible, whether or not they're ready to replace it with something? Sounds to me as though the rhetoric hasn't caught up with the plan. <laughs> uh, I must tell you, <laughs> sounds to me again, uh, as I've, I've listened now and I heard Congressman Collins say, well, there were six different plans. Well, I must tell you, those of us on the Democratic side, we've not heard one of them, and we certainly have not seen one of them. So I think that as uh, they've had uh, a bit of an open mic when it comes to talking about repeal, they've not concentrated on the idea of replace. So I think that the opportunity that they've presented to the American people right now is pretty empty. So, Congressman, uh, we just asked, as you heard, Congressman Collins about office hours in Buffalo. Let me ask you about office hours in downtown Springfield, Massachusetts. It sounds to me, from listening to what Congressman Collins said, he's talking about revising Obamacare more than he is about repealing and, and ruining Obamacare. What's your view on what he, he, the, needs to be done to Obamacare? He, here's the problem. Why wouldn't they treat Obamacare the way we treated George Bush's prescription D benefit plan? If you recall, we opposed uh, President Bush's plan largely because of what was known as the donut hole. That meant that you had to spend down X number of dollars before the benefit kicked in. We won the House, we won the Senate, we won the presidency, and quickly we closed the donut hole and moved on. Prescription D, or Part D of Medicare, is now an accepted entitlement. There was no effort made to repeal it. Instead, we improved it. And I think here, there was that opportunity, but they have used the rhetoric of repeal really without replace. And I'd like to improve it, but here's the other part of it that I think that bears noting. You need the mandate. Governor Romney in Massachusetts at the time said that there was no room for free riders, that you had, in fact, to buy health insurance. You can't do the other things by expanding coverage without requiring people to have health insurance. Their plan is presently, in, again, just the outline of what we've seen because there really is no plan. What they've suggested is that you could actually wait until you got sick before you bought health insurance. Any actuary can tell you that the idea of insurance is to spread risk, but that risk includes the mandate, and I think in this instance here, it's the mandate that holds the entire Obamacare plan together. I think it's an entirely reasonable expenditure. All right, we'll see how this shakes out in the next few weeks. Congressman Richard Neal, thank you so much. Just ahead. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.